Hi all, this is Anjali and we're going to start today programming in Python. So Python, as you know that as one of the growing languages, it's being used a lot in many fields in the computer science industry. So it is an open source uh, language and we have a community for Python where you can also work as a developer for different libraries of Python and you can contribute towards the inbuilt library set which Python has. So Python has a huge set of libraries which help you to work with so many different things. And one major feature of Python is the wide range of data structures which is which it provide you to work upon. So we'll be discussing all these features. So to start with, we're going to start with Python as a programming language. So first we will learn Python as a normal programming language where you would learn the basic flow controls, concept of variables and everything. And later on, we'll be moving to use Python for data analysis and then machine learning. To start with, first of all, you should know why should you learn Python? Why are we learning Python? What's the purpose? The purpose is that it's easy, easy to learn and understand for beginners. That means if you're a beginner, you don't have any knowledge of programming before starting with Python you can easily go for it. So we don't need that you have a prior knowledge in programming, then only you can start with Python. It's easy for the beginners to understand and to learn in a fast pace in comparison to languages like Java and all. Then you have is used to develop various types of applications. So I can use Python at many places for different type of applications. It can be used in web development, it can be used for data analysis, it can be used for various other purposes as well. Then increasing job options and high salaries. So as a Python developer, you have wide options uh, for uh, a job in the computer science industry, that is in the IT industry. And the pay packages for Python programmers is also quite good. Then compatible with agile design. So it's the way we design the softwares that uh, you first make a software, show it to the end user, end user sees whether it meets the requirements or not. And then if we have to make some changes, we make those changes in the software and then again see whether that meets user's requirement or not. So basically that means that you need to modify the software a number of times be before you reach to the final installation. So Python helps you in this a lot. I can make an application in Python and it's very easy to make some changes in that. So when I need to do some changes in the code and I want to see what effect it has on the final result. So Python helps a lot to perform that in a much easier way. And then obviously Python is a major tool for data analysis. No doubt before that we had language R and then we have SAS and the other tools for data analysis. But Python has emerged as a very good tool for data analysis where we can analyze a huge amount of data and we can predict something or we can tell the trends in marketing, we can tell the trends in customers and all. So data could be analyzed for various reasons and for various purposes. And with the help of uh, this data processing and visualization, we can conclude some results which can further be used for artificial intelligence or machine learning. So when we talk about machine learning or AI, it basically means that the computer should think of its own. But how? It's a machine. How can it think of its own? So basically, the task is to gather lots and lots of amount of data and then analyze that data to take a decision. So machine learning is that we program it this way that it keeps gathering the data from the day-to-day -day events and then use that data for making decisions or for giving suggestions. So that is machine learning. So that's the whole topic in itself. So we're not discussing that in too detail here, but these are few points which makes you more motivated towards learning Python. So these are the basic points which helps us to know whether I want to go for Python or I really don't need these points. So if you want to do any of these, if you find any of these points useful, you are at the right place. You're going to learn Python. So learning outcome. Once you are gone through with the complete series, you should be able to do all this. You should write the basic Python scripts using variables, constants, performing calculations, showing results. Then you should learn the Python scripts with the flow controls that how loops can work, how conditions can be checked. Loops means when we have to repeat the same code again and again. 
So that can be done with the help of looping statements in Python. Then working with data structures like lists, dictionaries, and arrays. We have these data structures in other languages as well, but Python provides much easier way to work on these data structures. It's really very flexible and easy to use. You can create your own functions. We can create our own functions, which can be invoked. That means called at any place so that your reusability of code is increased because we write that code once and it can be used at many places. The ones who are new to programming, who have never heard of these terms, you would find it a bit difficult to understand right now. But if you have knowledge of any other programming language, you would be understanding the terms like data structure, user defined functions and all. But if you are very new to programming, doesn't matter if you don't understand these terms sooner or later, as you go with the videos, you will understand all of these terms properly. Then use Python to read and write files. Then we will be doing our code for dealing with the runtime errors. And then how to use Python standard library. So there are many libraries available in Python, how to import them and how to use methods defined in them. And Python is an object oriented language. So for any object oriented language, you learn how to make classes and their objects and use them. So we would be covering the concepts of object oriented programming in Python. So this is what we would be doing in the complete series. Okay, so that is the learning outcome. Now, before starting with Python, what softwares you require? The software I require is I can install Python 3. Point, any version available to you. The latest is 3.6. So you can install any of the Python versions or I can install Anaconda, which is a complete package for all the tools which we need in Python. Or if you don't want to install any of the software, we have online Jupyter Notebook, which you can use without downloading or installing any software on your computer. So you can just directly open this Jupyter Notebook and start typing in that. Or you can download that on your PC to start working in it. I'll show you how to use these. For example, in my system, I have installed Python. So to start with Python, I type Python and click on this Python command prompt. So it will open this window, which is the Python interface for me. This is a command line interface where I can type in the commands. For example, I need to find hmm, some of two numbers or you just want to print hello world, which is usually the first program in every language when you start learning about it. So I just write here print in round brackets hello world. These round brackets are compulsory for version 3 but in version 2 we didn't require to put the brackets but here you will be writing it print hello world and just press enter you know it shows hello world that's it it executes the commands side by side so if i want to do something else i want to check something like i write a is equal to input enter your name so it asks me the name, say I write Anjali, then I write marks. By default, the value is entered as an integer. So we can write, sorry, by default, the value is entered as a string. So we need to convert it to an integer. For that, I can write this int here in round brackets. I'll give a message, enter marks. So I'm missing with one bracket. Okay enter marks I can enter any marks here and then if I want to check conditions we can use if if marks greater than equal to 40 I need to print pass otherwise I have to print fail so we write like this you don't have to go into the details of how I'm writing if and all I'm just showing you but we can write the Python code here and it works this way. Now out of this right now, since it's the first lecture, if you have a programming background, you would be able to understand what I'm doing here. But if you don't have a programming background, doesn't matter. Here you just need to focus on the command print, print, which is used to print something. Like I write print in double quotes, hello world. So whatever has to be printed, we can write in the print command and it will be printed on the screen. Then for inputting a value, we write input enter your name is the message which should be displayed like it was being displayed here 
and whatever you will enter will be stored in a variable named a now what do we mean by a variable and all this we all will be discussing but this is one of the interface where you work in python so this is one interface another interface possible is the jupyter notebook so i have anaconda installed for that so i can open the anaconda navigator and from there i can launch the jupyter notebook or if i don't have any software i don't have this i don't have anaconda but still i want to start working with python so you don't have to wait for anything you literally don't have to wait for anything just open your web browser and try here try dot jupyter dot org so what you have to try t r y dot jupyter dot org the moment you write this it will open this page and in the first option try jupyter with python so click on this first icon over here where you can see the python symbol so when i click on this it will open the jupyter notebook for me where i can write the python code so as a beginner if you just want to start writing the python code it's not required that you have to download or install something you can start it right away with the help of jupyter notebook so i get the jupyter notebook here here they have given the commands and the links like from this link uh no first you have to install anaconda and with the help of this command you can open the jupyter notebook so that's another thing okay let's see if you want to make another file in this go to file and then new notebook python 3 so when i click on this i get a notebook here and i can start typing the command it's the same thing which we did there i want to type in over here i want to write print hello world then you want to take the name so write a is equal to input enter your name and then i want to write print again and i want to print welcome plus a and this is your run button click on it and the code gets executed over here so it shows hello world it asks for the name i enter the name and it shows welcome anjali so the proper output is this first hello world is printed then it asks for the name and the name is printed with the message welcome so this is how you can run a very basic python code so now if we evaluate this code you know what is the purpose of print the purpose of input is to take a value and variable means a memory location where you can store some data so we have to store the data somewhere in the memory but how do we know that where in the memory it's getting stored so we give it a name we give it a name a b c whatever but just remember the names which you are giving should be valid names means i can't have spaces in the names i can't have special symbols in the variable names i can have only one symbol called underscore so that is the only symbol allowed in a variable name so just take care of these rules and you can give any name to the variable and you can work on it so this is how we work on a very basic code in python we'll be doing in detail that what do we mean by variables how do we write the various commands and all in detail in the upcoming video so how to write a program how to use basic stuff i'll be covering in the next video in this video we've just discussed why should you do python and how to start working with python with software you require for it hope this video was useful to you to understand what python is and why should you learn this so if you you found this video useful don't forget to click on the like button and do subscribe so that you keep getting the notifications of further uploads in the series till then keep watching keep learning thank you